Do you know what it feels like to live in a splendidly luxurious castle, wearing extravagant dresses, indulging in exquisite dishes, and always having servants take care of you? Well, actually, I don't really know either. I'm just a little maid who's fortunate enough to be friends with Princess Anne. <laughs> oh, by the way, my name is Diana, and I was born in the palace of a small European kingdom. Sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Well, I don't exactly live a fairy tale life. I'm only here because of my mother, Stella. She had devoted her entire life to serve the queen. So in return, I was allowed to live in the castle. And when I grew up, I became a servant to Princess Anne, who was just a few ages older than me. So we immediately hit it off. Ironically, though, I'm not quite cut out to be a servant. I'm a bit, okay, maybe very clumsy. And I tend to be less helpful than I actually should. When all is quiet, it's likely that I've just hidden myself away in the library, lost in its endless sea of books. It would be more fun if Anne was just as happy to spend time in the library as me, but she doesn't care much for reading or studying. She said it makes you age like crazy. But still, she must attend her mandatory classes, by the Queen's order, of course. Although, she'd much better enjoy cooking, cleaning, and decorating. So whenever there weren't eyes on us, Anne and I would help each other out. I would sneak into her classes, listen to the tutor attentively so I could help her with assignments later. In return, she'd help me with the palace's errands. Anne was how I imagined having a sister is like. We just got each other's back. I knew the real Anne. I supported her passion for baking, even when her own mother forbade her. And I was the only one who knew about her big crush on Count Harold, who often came bearing tributes from the people. Anne was so kind that she always gave me plenty of good food to share with mom and other maids. But mom wasn't too thrilled about this. For some reason, she was always anxious seeing how close me and Anne were. Don't forget your place, Diana. Princess Anne is still royalty, and you're just a little maid. Be sure you never cross the line with her. She's just trying to help us, mom. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Then one day, Anne found a beautiful vintage dress from her closet and convinced me to try it on. I agreed, and once I stepped out of the changing screen, Anne was amazed. See, you'd make such a gorgeous princess. Did I ever tell you you remind me so much of my aunt, the late Queen Mary? I don't have much memories of her, but I've seen her picture in the royal family tree. And you very much shared the same aura with her. <laughs> I wish, Anne. But if I were a princess, I would have people do whatever I want. Like, fetch me my robe, servant. And when you're finished, my toes could use a salt bath. <laughs> we were just messing around when mom came storming in. Diana, how dare you desecrate the princess? I told you not to cross the... She didn't finish her words, but fell to the ground, holding her chest in pain. I rushed over to her as Anne ran to the hallway looking for help. Mom! I... Diana... I need... to tell you something. No, Mom, save your strength. The doctor will be here any minute now. No, Diana, you listen to me. I've been hiding the truth from you your entire life. It's time you learn. What? What do you mean? I'm not your birth. Mother, Diana, just find my safe, okay? The answers are there. And don't tell anyone. She took a one last breath before closing her eyes. <laughs> the doctors rushed in, but it was too late. She had a heart attack with a pre-existing heart condition, so she didn't stand a chance. I spent the next week doing nothing except grieving my mother's passing. It didn't even bother me that we were not genetically tied. In my eyes, Stella was my mother, the only family I had. She loved and cared for me more than anyone else ever could. It hurt to even be here in her room, feeling her presence surrounding this place. But as I was going through her stuff, I accidentally stepped on a section of the floor that sounded hollow. It immediately sprung open, revealing a secret cellar underneath. The first thing I noticed was an intricate key-shaped necklace. Next to it was a letter, unveiling that this was an heirloom from my birth mother, who was none other than Queen Mary herself. Even more shockingly, she was still alive. <gasps> On the day I was born, by Miranda's order, I was separated from Queen Mary, and she was held captive in the castle's dungeon. If it weren't for her pleading Miranda not to harm me, I might have been thrown into some orphanage far away. Instead, I was placed in Stella's care, as Miranda wanted to keep a close eye on me to prevent any chance of betrayal. 
Stella had regretted following Miranda's order ever since, as she grew to love me like her true daughter. She wanted to run away with me, but the thought of Miranda finding out and putting her family in danger stopped her. But she'd hoped that one day, I'd be reunited with my mother. None of this felt real. My hands were still shaking as I held the letter. I need the answer to all my questions. I owed it to my mother to fulfill her dying wish. That night, following the instructions my mother left in her letter, I pretended to be a maid bringing food to prisoners and went down the secret tunnel. There were no guards in the large, abandoned prison. Only a thin, emaciated woman. Slowly and carefully, I approached her. Are you Queen Mary? I handed her the necklace. The woman's eyes lit up, and she looked up at me in shock, tears welling in her eyes. Diana. I nodded. She pulled me into her arms and cried in joy, but then she abruptly pulled away from me. What are you doing down here? Miranda is going to find out. It's too dangerous. You need to leave. It's okay. No one knows I'm here. They won't find me. Still, it's too risky. My sister is an evil woman. She always wanted to be the queen. So she picked the day I was at my weakest to imprison me, subdue you, and falsely declared my demise during childbirth. That's how she eliminates any obstacles that stop her from seizing the kingdom. But Miranda will never be the queen in people's heart. She's nothing more than an oppressor, and it pains me to know she has corrupted our kingdom. But you are here now, Diana. You're the true heir to the throne. You have to stop Miranda. Me? I still haven't dared to believe any of this is real. I grew up just a little maid who's never been formally educated. What can I possibly do to overthrow someone in control of an entire country? Diana, I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better childhood, but I know deep inside you are a strong, resilient girl. Stella told me all the time how smart and bright you are as she brought me food. Me and her both believed in you. You have the power to make things right. My mind was still swirling with all this new information, things that just seemed impossible, unbelievable. I understand why you might be doubtful, but here, leave the palace and test your DNA against mine. Once you confirm your identity, you can decide what to do next, but you can't stay inside the castle any longer, because once Miranda finds out you know the truth, she won't leave you alone. I hesitated for a moment, but I knew what needed to be done. So, early in the morning, I packed up some belongings and grabbed some food before sneaking into a freight truck that was about to leave. But then, I suddenly bumped into someone. Hey, watch where you're going! <gasps> Shh! Keep it down! Why? Don't tell me you're some kind of thief. No, I'm a maid. I'm just not allowed to go outside the palace. But, um, the princess desperately wants to make a, a Dutch chocolate cake, and the storage is out of ingredients, so I need to go to market. And did you plan to sneak into my truck and have a free ride there? Ugh, I didn't know it was your truck, but if you can help me, that would be lovely. And what would I get in return? My company. Fair enough. It's a lonely ride. By the way, what's your name? Diana, what's yours? Uh, um, people call me Harry. Now let's get going. We hopped into the truck, and Harry turned out to be not such a bad companion. It was nice to have someone else my age to talk to for once, especially a handsome one. Then he turned on this music that's called pop. I swear it was so good, I couldn't help grooving along. This song is my favorite. Do you know it? Nope. The Queen doesn't even allow us to own a radio. Oh, wow. Maybe I can sneak one in for you. I would absolutely love that. <laughs> After a while of driving, we took a break in the forest to stretch our legs. I shared with Harry some cookies and baked earlier today, when suddenly a snake coiled around the lower part of my leg and sunk its teeth into it. Pain immediately shot up. Moments later, Harry dislodged the snake and threw it away. Then he leaned over, sucking the venom out of my wound without hesitation. I blushed, both confused and flattered. He grabbed some clean cloths in the truck and helped me bandage the wound. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, that was weird. No, no, that was kind of you. And I really hate to say this, but I don't think the snake is poisonous. I read about it in a book once, but still, thank you for saving me. His face turned bright red even for minutes later. It was so cute. <laughs> we then continued our journey. When we arrived in an aristocratic area where people seemed to be living in luxury, I began to doubt that the kingdom was as poor and in bad shape as Queen Mary had said until we arrived at the commoner community. 
I was taken aback by the small buildings and houses that were old and crumbling. The market was basically desolate, with only a couple of sellers in sight. I couldn't even find any baking supplies there. It was growing dark, so Harry asked if I wanted to crash at his place. I had nowhere else to go, so I agreed. Harry's house was shockingly small, but it was clean and cozy. His father is a doctor, and his mom takes care of his three-year-old sister. They kindly welcomed me and invited me to have dinner with them. Although it was frugal, to say the least, and I could tell that everyone was still hungry after the meal. I have a loaf of bread in my pack. I'd love to share it with you all, if that's okay, to thank you for your hospitality. Harry's mother smiled and nodded, and his little sister squealed in delight as she dug into the loaf of bread. Since the famine began, everyone has suffered, even the ones with good jobs. We've all needed to tighten our belts a bit. Just then, a loud thumping sounded at the front door. Open this door now, or we will kick it down. As Harry and his parents rushed to the door, I hid in another room, afraid that I would be recognized. The guards were there, demanding tax payment, or else the family would be removed from their home. It hurt me to watch them fork over the money, searching their pockets to count every last coin they had. That night, I tossed and turned. I couldn't stop thinking about how Queen Miranda could oppress her own people to this point. I was flooded with guilt, thinking about how gleefully Anne and I would share the tributes taken from these poor people, unaware that they were suffering and starving. I couldn't stay in bed any longer. I crept out into the hallway and down the stairs and suddenly spotted Harry's father reading a book under a lamplight. I'm sorry to disturb you. No worries. Anything I could help you with? Um, I actually do need your help. You see, I left the palace because I wanted to confirm something. If you could please compare my DNA to this, this person believes she's my birth mother. Sure, it might take a couple of days. That's fine, but please do not tell anyone about this. He looked confused, like he wanted to ask more questions, but seeing how reserved I was, he didn't. The next morning, I helped Harry and his mother clean up the houses of other people who couldn't pay the tax last night. The guards had ransacked a number of homes looking for the money, and now they were left starving and penniless. It couldn't go on like this. I need to find a way to feed the people first. So I came up with the idea of hunting some wild animals in the forest for food. Then I instructed each household to build a hidden cellar under the ground to store their food and keep their properties to themselves. I was so focused on the dire situation that I didn't even have time to worry about the DNA results until I received them that evening. The result shows that you and the other person are indeed related. <gasps> I see. It also shows that the other DNA belongs to the late Queen Mary. May I know how this is possible? I, um, uh, it's because Queen Mary is still alive. And if the result is true, that means I really am her daughter. At that moment, Harry unexpectedly entered the room, jaw dropped. You're what? It's the country's fair day today. Or as I like to call it, my winning day. See that huge plushie over there? It's about to become mine. Ready, set, and yes, bullseye! I excitedly took the bear when it suddenly got yanked away by this crazy bull. Hey, I won that bear fair and square, but I saw it first. Now hand it over, hobbit. Hobbit? I yanked the bear from him, but it ended up ripping in half. His girlfriend burst into tears, and now I'm like a red rag to him. He rushed towards me, and before I could even think straight, my fist took over. How many times have I told you, Angie? A girl doesn't just raise her fist and cause trouble like that. It was self-defense. He was gonna hit me, Mom. I'm done with this. Like father, like daughter. Why are you even bringing him up? He left us years ago, so let him stay out of our lives. Even thinking about him made my blood boil. I turned to the window, avoiding the look I knew my mom was giving me. When we got home, we found the door open. Something wasn't right. I quickly ran into the house and saw black shadows standing in our living room. Who are you people? What are you doing in my house? All hail our new leader! The lights suddenly came back on, and I saw them all bow to... me? Angelina, I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm Nick Mason, Mr. Bruno's right-hand man. My dad sent you here? From this day on, you will become our new leader of the ex-organization, on his behalf. You gotta be kidding me! For so many years, he hasn't cared about whether we live or die, and now he suddenly wants me to take over? And look at you all. This organization seems no good. Please don't misunderstand us. 
X organization was founded by your father to help the local people and fight for justice. But things took a horrible turn, so I'm afraid he's gone to jail for a little while. He's in jail? Oh, my head. Fighting for justice? That's why he's in jail now? Your father put the safety of the seaport local first. In doing so, he fell into the enemy's trap. You will understand him better if you accept his wish and become our leader. As much as I hate to admit it, I missed my dad. He once promised that he would skip his work and hang out with me on my birthday, but then he just disappeared without a word and has been quiet for the past six years. Until now. Darling, I have something for you. She gave me some old letters and a plushie bear, which I'd begged my dad to buy for me. She'd hid it from me the whole time, as she was mad at my dad for always risking his life for things that weren't any of his business. It turned out that my dad had still cared about me, even without me knowing. Mom, I've made up my mind. I hope you'll support me. So, my mom and I had a long journey to the seaport of the city where my dad's ex-organization was secretly operating. We walked into the market, then stopped at a large fish shop. How on earth does an organization have their secret base in such a crowded place? The most dangerous place is the safest one. Remember that. I remembered my dad used to say this to me when I was a kid too. This must be his crazy idea. Nick led me into a room at the back of the store and introduced this as the organization's base. So this is where my dad used to work and he'd still kept the same old hat all these years? Let's get to work. There's been a lot of theft going on in town lately. Every night, the thieves break into stores and steal everything they can. People are panicking right now, so we need to solve this as soon as possible. Isn't this the police's responsibility? If they were capable, we wouldn't have to get involved. That's why your father maintains this organization. Now you need to settle in a bit. I've arranged your accommodation and enrolled you in a local school. Remember, your identity is top secret. For the next few days, at 5 a.m. every morning, Uncle Nick got me up and took me to the port to tell me more about the thieves. However, he just joined the fish auction the whole morning instead of actually doing anything serious. So, I went somewhere else and pretended to talk to the fishmongers about the burglaries in town. At that moment, a guy in a cap that covered his face bumped into me. Hey, dude! Nice bracelet, but ever taught to apologize? Hey, hey, take it easy. You're making a scene. Okay... Maybe I should just behave like a normal schoolgirl here. Having to get up so early in the morning to go to the port also made me too exhausted to study anything. One morning I was falling asleep at my usual place when some noise woke me up. A group of gangsters was teasing a boy? Dude, I'm trying to catch some shut-eye over here. Shut up, loser. Uh-oh, they were messing with the wrong person. I grabbed a nearby mop and made some fancy moves that took them all down, then dragged the flabbergasted nerd out of there. He wasn't calm enough to run for his life. This little guy is Killian. Ever since that day, he kept following me and wouldn't shut up about how strong I was, saying things like, I could never imagine a small person like you having such crazy strength, or they all pick on me but you, Angel, don't. Then let's be friends. I have no peace when he's around. While I was trying to make some space for myself, a call suddenly came from Uncle Nick. One of the jewelry shops in the city just got burglarized. Can you help? What? Yeah, I'll head back to headquarters and set up a plan. You can count on me. I then hung up, and that's when I heard a ball hitting the floor. I turned around, and there was Killian, standing behind me, shocked to the core. He'd obviously heard the whole conversation. If you utter a word of this to anyone, you'll not wake to see another day. Do you hear me? I... I can help you. I know this town like the back of my hand. Okay, we can be friends. Or associates. As long as you keep quiet. After school, Killian and I rushed to the crime scene. While wandering around, I spotted a shiny thing among the broken glass. It must have been from those thieves. But wait, I've seen this D symbol somewhere. I was about to pick it up when Killian grabbed my hand, shivering. Bro, it's her who attacked us back then. That gangster suddenly came at me. I tried to dodge him, but ended up toppling over backwards. Suddenly, a strong arm held me back and shielded me from the punch. Mamma mia! Who's this handsome hunk? I wrapped my arms around him and pulled out my inner damsel in distress. Oh, my hero! These jerks won't leave me alone! Please save me! I'm scared! Mess with my friend one more time and you're dead meat. Get lost! He turned to me, making sure I was okay, then parted way. Through Killian, I found out his name is Frank, a senior at our school, and he's known for his cold and reserved demeanor. Definitely my type of guy. But wait, what about-
about the bracelet? I returned to the broken glass window. The bracelet was nowhere to be found. At school, all students were constantly talking about these recent burglaries. Everyone was worried about who would be the next victim. When will all this nonsense stop? I wonder who their next target will be. Don't you see? The recent victims were all the big shots in town, and the crimes were all on the days the police weren't out patrolling. So then, Graham's jewelry shop and Holden's boutique store could potentially be their next target? That makes sense! Uh, wait, Frank? Now that you're here, I feel so much safer. It'll probably be Holden's because Graham already added a new security system to his shop. Please stop fiddling with your hair like that. Good observation. The police don't patrol the port tonight, so they might make a move. So stay still inside, will you, sweetie? Aww. But his sweetie still gotta watch Holden's shop and catch the thieves red-handed tonight. An hour had already passed, but nothing had happened. Right at that moment, Nick received a phone call that Graham's shop had just been robbed. The thieves broke the security system and everything had been taken. Nick snapped at me for acting impulsively without having any clear evidence. But this felt so sketchy, though. Holden's store was way more vulnerable. It's like they knew we were waiting to ambush them here. A few days later, while I was patrolling around the shopping street, Killian informed me that there was a suspicious masked man sneaking around the pearl shop. I immediately dashed there, right at the moment he was breaking the lock. In the blink of an eye, I kicked him, knocking him to the ground. Angelina! Holy crickets, are you okay? I looked up to see Frank running towards me. The thief immediately rose up, causing me to fall back, then fled the scene right away. Catch the thief, quick! Frank and Killian darted past me and followed the guy. I waited for them at the harbor, but only Killian came back. Ugh, sorry, Angelina, but I have to say this. There is something fishy about Frank. I think he's on the thief's side. Oh, come on. Are you jealous of him? How do I know you're not their spy? What do you mean? You've been acting suspicious from the get-go. You wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. And remember how you listened in on my conversation with Nick? And what about when you made me so sure it was Holden Shop that would be the next target, hmm? And now you're blaming Frank? You're so wrapped up in that jerk. I saw him purposefully let that thief go. When I was about to catch up to him, Frank suddenly stopped, making me crash into him. Then the thief got away. That, that can't be. He's always there to help me. I'm the one who's always backing you up, but you only see that fraud as your hero. Ugh, just forget it. Wait, I, I had no idea who to trust. It was all so confusing. Right at that moment, I got a message from Frank asking me to go to this meteor camping place as he had something important to say to me. Okay, it was time to confront him and get the truth. I rushed there as fast as I could, only to find... nobody? I looked around and noticed this suspiciously lit up tent. The tent flap suddenly opened, and a shadow bolted towards me. Hey, hey, calm down, it's me. I opened my eyes to see Frank in front of me. He'd set up this whole place for me? Frank suddenly took my hand and confessed. Angelina, I've fallen head over heels for you. I was wondering, will you be my girlfriend? Together, we could be a power couple. With your ex-organization and my Darkwalkers clan backing us, how do you know I'm related to ex-organization? Huh, <laughs> I've been watching you since that first day you wandered around the fish market with that old Nick. <laughs> Remember this bracelet? You almost got me that time. You, you shameless, rotten, stinking skunk! I even trusted you over Killian! Oh, come on. It's not my fault you fell for me and betrayed your best friend. You and I are more alike than you think. It's only fitting that we become a team. Enough! Listen carefully. I'm never going to team up with a dirtbag like you. H how did you- Guys, take her! From the tents, Frank's minions came out one by one and surrounded me, then gradually tightened the siege. Let's see who's the boss now. Oh, no, 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 I fell into his trap. Those punks held a rope, ready to tie me up. But right at that moment, I heard a car engine approaching. Is that Killian leading Nick and the X organization? He jumped out of the car, ran past the minions and Frank to get to me. Angelina, are you alright? You're not hurt anywhere, are you? I shook my head and felt so touched. He'd come to save me. I thought you were mad at me. I was, a little bit. But I couldn't let you do all this alone, so I went to Uncle Nick. Behind Killian, Uncle Nick and the team had seized all the thieves and their ringleader Frank. Now they'd spill all their dirty secrets in front of the law. 
It turns out, my dad was about to expose the Darkwalker clan for their evil antics when they framed him for intentionally causing injury and put him behind bars. Since I became the new leader of X, Frank had been trying to seduce me so he could manipulate the organization. Finally, though, my dad was found innocent and released. Mom and I welcomed him home with open arms. I'm so sorry for leaving you behind. I was afraid I would put you in danger. It's all right, Dad. You must have had a hard time, too. I'm sorry for taking so long to realize how proud I am of you. I missed you so much. Dad was super impressed with what we had accomplished for the organization. He even decided to let me continue to be the leader, all the while supporting me and teaching me his tricks. And I know for sure everything will turn out okay, especially with this guy by my side. So, did I do a good job proving myself, lady boss? The vice leader position seems to suit me well, don't you think? Hmm, you do deserve a promotion. How does vice leader and boyfriend sound? Hey there, animated story show viewers. I'm Crystal, a model and influencer, and I'm here for the Trend Like This Influencer Awards. Why don't you come on in and get ready with me? I know what you're thinking. I have a unique look. You see, I have vitiligo, a condition that causes pale patches to develop on my skin. It's definitely different, but I don't really see it as a disadvantage, but rather one of my biggest perks in life. Since I was a kid, people have always gawped at me in the street. But luckily, my mom and big sis have always been there to support me. Honey, they're only looking at you that way because you're beautifully different. Yeah, Crystal, never doubt yourself. You're one of a kind. Thanks to them, I've grown to adore the way I look. Then one time, while we were walking in the park, this eccentric-looking man approached me. Oh my word, your skin! It's a masterpiece! Turns out, he was Bo Ivanov, the world-renowned photographer. He begged me to model for him, and with the encouragement of my mom and sis, I agreed. And my photos became a viral hit. That's when my interest in modeling sparked. I joined this awesome modeling agent and got to learn all poses for photo shoots, wear these gorgeous outfits, and best of all, have makeup done to complement my vitiligo, not to hide it. Ever since then, I've worked my butt off, fully committed to my work. That's how I became the face of multiple fashion brands and built up my influence empire. I wanted to pave the way for people like me to love themselves and celebrate our own uniqueness. Because look at me, my career, my life could come to this point today, all thanks to my skin. And I wouldn't change it for the world. But then this morning came, I woke up to see, yeah, my vitiligo patches, they were gone. This can't be happening. I still have tons of fashion shows and events booked for the rest of the year. Without my patches, will they all cancel on me? Panicked, I called my manager, Alex, and she immediately rushed into my apartment. This shouldn't have happened. The project with Red Rush is next week. I know that. What can I do? Go see a dermatologist? No, Crystal. You can't breathe a word about this to anyone. You don't want to ruin your career, do you? Well, no, but I can't hide inside forever. No, you can't. But you can fake your patches. Just use makeup. Draw some on. What? You mean I should lie to everyone? Your choice. It's either that or kiss goodbye to your career. This is wrong, I know, but I've worked so hard for this. I couldn't just give up now. I guess the foundation would have to make do. I went back to my daily modeling life, and luckily no one seemed to suspect anything. But I was so on edge and constantly checking my makeup. Crystal, have you heard? The brand Rarus is looking for models with unconventional features for its newest fashion collection. You're the perfect fit! OMG! Everyone who's anyone in fashion knew of the Rarus' creator, Mr. Finnegan. If I become his muse, that's my step into high fashion world! I can't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity! I got my focus straight, fearlessly walking into the building, when suddenly my heel got stuck. I tumbled backward, and out of nowhere, these strong arms wrapped around me, and I landed straight into their warm embrace. For a moment there, I could feel their divine scent overpowering me. Hmm, Dior Sauvage, isn't it? You don't change much, do you? Still clumsy, even though you're now a superstar. Hold up. This voice. It's Sam, my high school ride or die. My, my, puberty has hit him hard, huh? Samuel knelt down and gently put the heel back on my foot. Yep, my heart was definitely flipping out of my chest. You're going in for the casting, right? Oh, um, yes. But how do you know? I'm one of the judges. I gotta go now. Break a leg. Uh, but not literally. Wow, Samuel's made a name for himself already. Impressive. Wait, Crystal, you're here for work. And now time to shine. I strutted my way along the catwalk, doing my signature twist-turn pose at the end of it. As expected, all the judges were mesmerized. This job was in the bag. 
Just then, everyone went ooh and awe at the girl next in line. It's Amanda! She's known as the super rookie, who challenges the modeling world's standards. Ironically, that title once belonged to me, but that's how this industry works. You can easily be dismissed if not careful. We got the results right after the casting. As expected, I was in for the show. Hooray! Hey, Crystal, right? Amanda, huge fan of yours. Say, can a pro like you give this rookie any advice while we train together? You do know this is a competition, right? That means no help. Then I shimmied off. Day one of the training and I already messed up. I had to disguise myself to sneak out and buy a new one. Crisis averted, but this did make me 30 minutes late. You're the professional. Act like one so us amateur can look up to. A veteran in modeling. Or so they say. Those chicks wouldn't miss the chance to dethrone me. Especially her. Welcome, everyone. May I introduce you to our Fall 2023 Haute Couture Collection. It is inspired by the elegant art of ballet. So besides your usual training, you'll have a chance to learn some of the moves to capture its true essence. Then I'll pick my star, my vedette. Ballet? I hadn't done that since the accident. Little six-year-old me was having a ballet performance and had to do this crazy spinning technique. But somehow, I ended up twirling like a humming top, then face-planted right on the stage. I never forget the audience's mocking waves of laughter. No, get yourself together, Crystal. Whatever the challenge is, I'll succeed and rock the vedette position. The first lesson was catwalk. Easy peasy, no one came close to matching me. Good posture, excellent posing. Well done, Crystal. Oh, he's so sweet. Can we just take a break to admire this piece of art? Come on, why are you so shy today, Crystal? Your patches are superb. <laughs> Except they're just the magic of makeup. But the nightmare had only just begun. Jeez, these clothes were way too tight. They got me melting like the witch from The Wizard of Oz. Gotta go touch up. Then during another session, I couldn't keep my balance and was wobblier than a jellyfish. Meanwhile, Amanda effortlessly executed all those moves. A few days later, Mr. Finnegan organized a photo shoot, which we had to pose like a ballerina on this revolving platform. The past trauma immediately rushed back into my head. I stepped onto the platform shaking like a leaf. Only with Samuel holding my hands could I imagine to do the simplest pose. At least it's over now. My, my, our pro seems a little rusty, doesn't she? Just step back and let one of us younger girls take care of this. Right, Amanda? Go practice, Xena. Amanda stepped up to the platform. Her body started moving like a real swan. Gorgeous, Amanda. You're as graceful as the ballerina in the musical box. That's it. I think we got the shot. Well done. The whole set erupted in applause, and Amanda was the center of attention. Looks like you could learn a thing or two from your junior. Look, I may not be the best ballerina out there, but I'll show them where 1,000% efforts get me in life. So I stayed later after the training to practice more, starting with stretching. Ouch, not as easy as it looked. Okay, let's try again. Just have to raise my leg and... Whoa, whoa! Okay, this time it has to work. And now the hardest part, sur le point. Uh-oh. Just then, Samuel appeared, trying to catch me, but we both ended up stumbling on the floor. Don't try too hard. You may hurt yourself. It's just, the vedette means a lot to me. I know you can do it. You've been such a positive influence, and I know that energy can get you what you want. No, my patches. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's okay. I crossed the line. I'll just leave now. Don't, please. If you only knew the truth, you wouldn't think so highly of me. Hey, what's wrong? You can talk to me, you know. Just then, the lights brightened around us. What are you two doing here at this hour? Samuel looked startled and immediately kept his distance from me. Nothing. I saw Crystal practicing. Thought I could give her some advice. That's not fair. I need some too. What do you think of my releve? They started laughing together like a married couple. Since when did they get so close? After a few days of intense practice, I may not be a ballet master yet, but I did feel more confident about facing the final challenge, which decided who would be the vedette. Look at this gorgeous couture design. I would make a perfect black swan. I tried the dress on, but accidentally smudged the foundation and got it all over the dress. Oh no! I immediately rushed to the bathroom trying to wash the stain off. Stupid foundation. Super stain my butt. The door suddenly snapped open and in stepped, Amanda. You, your vitiligo patches? They're coming off? And what are you doing with the dress? I tried to hide it, but she already snatched it away from me. Is it foundation stain? Did you fake your vitiligo? No, no. I was diagnosed with vitiligo for real. I, I swear. 
I told her the truth, thought she was going to use it against me, but to my surprise, she looked heartbroken. I decided to pursue modeling because I felt inspired by you, but now you're telling me it's all a scam? How could you? Amanda, wait, please. I, I thought you were against me. Does it matter anymore? Now that I got a taste of the truth, you don't deserve my respect. I was at an utter loss for words. I'd been so wrapped up in fear of losing my career that I couldn't care less how my action could affect those who looked up to me. I'm nothing more than a hypocrite. I couldn't live like this anymore. Fatiligo or not, I had to stay true to who I am. I walked straight up to the judges panel and wiped all my foundation away right in front of them. Mr. Finnegan, I no longer fit in your collection. The truth is, my vitiligo has gone. I no longer have any unconventional features. Thus, I'm here to announce that I will cut myself from the show. I'm deeply sorry for all the trouble I caused. I turned to walk out the door, but there stood Samuel. Crystal, I don't understand. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm not the person you think I am. I ran home, hid under the blanket, and cried myself to sleep. Suddenly, a call from my manager woke me up. How can you sleep at this hour? The press is going wild. They're calling you an attention-seeking fraud. I immediately came to my senses and looked up the news. Oh no, how could it break out so fast? At this speed, I'd be canceled by tomorrow morning. See what happens when you act out of my order? Gosh, you models are so dumb. Don't go anywhere. I'll be there to handle this. Was she being for real? All of this was her idea in the first place. Enough! Have fun dealing with this on your own, Alex. I shut down my phone, packed my stuff, and left it all behind to go to my secret place. I used to spend time here with my family when I was a kid. Being surrounded by nature calms me down. Suddenly a hand pressed on my shoulder. Hey, we've been looking for you. Samuel? And Amanda? Did you guys follow me here? It's the only way we could find you. I'm sorry for going at you like that. I was so shocked. You don't have to. It's all my fault. I lost myself when my vitiligo went away. I acted out of fear and ended up disappointing everyone who's counting on me. <sighs> well, it's hard to stay sane when your identity is taken from you. But what's important is you've learned your lesson. Now, where is the fearless, confident crystal we all love? She's right. Patches or not, you're always special to us. That means a lot to me. Thanks, you guys. Turns out, I'd misunderstood Amanda this whole time. She's brilliant, gorgeous, and caring. And perfect for Samuel. Welp, that stings. Suppose it's time I got back to work for some damage control. I opened the phone to see hundreds of notifications. Among them was a message from Mr. Finnegan, saying he has a place for me at the fashion show. So it's not the end for me, right? Go get it, girl. Yes, it felt so good to be back. Crystal, you're here. I have great news. You'll be the vedette for this collection. Me? But I don't have any unconventional features. Doesn't matter. You're perfect the way you are. Two girls will stand by your side, and you'll be in the center wearing this work of art. An elegant swan among the flock of ugly ducks. Isn't that a bit offensive? So this was your plan all along? Playing dirty tricks to save your flopped career? Cut it, Xena. Mocking me won't change the situation. There's something fishy going on here, and I'm gonna get to the end of it. Finally, the show has come. As soon as I got the signal, I strutted to the runway confidently, turning heads to my every step. But it's not for the reason you're thinking. I actually switched places with Amanda, and now all the spotlights are on her. Right at that moment, Mr. Finnegan bolted to the runway. What do you think you're doing? You ruined my show. I had a deal with her. I... What deal? Tell me. Right now. I... It's her who's behind this. Alex? Ugh, that snake! It turned out Alex bribed Mr. Finnegan to let me be the vedette and dragged the models with unconventional features down since I'm no longer one of them. Hearing that, all the models turned furious, ready to jump at the two frauds. You two have crossed the line. I don't need any of your manipulative games to continue my career. I will stay true to myself no matter what. Unconventional features or not, I'm always willing to speak up for them because everyone is beautiful in their own way and they deserve a chance to showcase their beauty to the world. The audience erupted in cheers and applause while Mr. Finnegan and Alex were surrounded by cameras and criticism. Justice served. After all that drama, I'm still modeling, but with a different agency that fully accepts me for the real me. I continued to influence young people on self-love and being uniquely themselves. Amanda and I became the best of friends. We also made tons of plans to collaborate with Samuel. But honestly, I couldn't shake off this heart-wrenching feeling whenever these two were together. Luckily, my hectic schedule has left me no time to think about that. Guess what? After days and nights of hard work, I now have my own line of skincare products called Only You. Exciting, right? Oh, Sam, you made it! Wow, they're beautiful. Amanda will love them.
Uh, no, they're not for Amanda. They're for you. Crystal, I... I'm crazy about you. I always have been. What? It's me you like all along? Then why didn't you tell me that before, silly? I leaped into his arms, and we shared the most amazing kiss. Perfect ending for an amazing journey, huh? My precious Sunday is ruined because of my not-so-precious sister, Emma, who insisted on dragging me to church for some sister time. We walked in to see the priest rushing over. Welcome in. You must be our new member, Janet. W whoa whoa just then, the holy statues nearby all fell over and shattered to pieces. It's a bad omen. She's a jinx. No, no, no! You devil! Get out of here! Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Hi, my name's Janet. If you think I'm a jinx too, you're seriously wrong. Because animators, rewind that last scene. Pause it right there and... See that? That's my sister, Emma. And fast forward a bit more. Pan over, please. There. That right there is the ringmaster behind my so-called bad luck. You must be wondering why I hadn't exposed Emma that day. It's because everyone is fooled by her naive Cinderella look and never believed how a living angel could do such mischievous deeds. But the truth is, she's the devil. She did everything to make me look like a walking disaster everywhere I go. But who am I, huh? That night, to get back at Emma, I hid under the bed till she was sound asleep, wrapped my icy cold hands around her ankles, jumped out from under the bed, and BOO! Emma screamed through the roof, and our parents walked into the room worried just to see me laughing hysterically. Right then, the police on patrol also barged in, thinking something real wrong went on in our house. We ended up spending the night trying to explain to them nothing happened, and they finally left. Do you know how many sleepless nights we've had just because of you girls' petty fights? That's it. I'm signing you both up to join a community farm from tomorrow. What? But Dad, I can't live amongst animals and dirt. For once, I agree with Emma. There's no way I'm going there. You're not going back till you learn to live with each other. Living with Emma 24-7? I'd much rather be the Jinx now. So the next morning, Mom and Dad drove us to the farm to live off the land and bond together. But... Look at this tranquility and picturesque scenery. Maybe coming here wasn't such a bad idea after all. Suddenly, a loud obnoxious track started playing from inside my suitcase, startling the animals, and they went rogue. Stop the music! But my suitcase was locked. I caught Emma smirking, pressing her phone, and the music suddenly stopped. Once everything was under control, the farmers gave me looks of disapproval. Just when I thought things couldn't be any worse, a trailer nearby slipped off and began to roll downhill, heading straight for an oblivious farmer. Emma immediately swooped in and pushed herself and the farmer out of harm's way just in the nick of time. Richard, are you okay? Oh, yes, thanks to this young lady. You saved my life. What a good luck charm you are. That trailer has been sitting there for ages without any problems. Why did it suddenly break just now? Oh, it's my sister. She has this reputation for bringing bad luck wherever she goes. I apologize on her behalf. No, 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 no! Don't listen to her! She's evil! That's not something you should say to your sister. Look at her! What an angel! Emma immediately activated her manipulating power. Aww! Come on, we got the nicest room for you. <laughs> hey, what about me? The next morning, I was told to milk the cows while Emma didn't even have to lift a finger, just wandering around and pulling pranks on me. In a panic, a guy appeared and helped me out. What happened here? The hoses are all snipped off. I'm so sorry about that. It's my sister's stupid prank to get me to look like bad luck. Interesting. Oh well, we'll hand milk the cows until we get them replaced. Hand milk? That'd take forever. Emma's gonna have to pay. Hey, no need for that. I'll give you a hand. I'm Kai, by the way. He gave the brightest smile, and I instantly felt better. I'm Janet. Thanks for helping me, but which buttons do I push to get milk? Kai cracked up, and I felt like the dumbest thing in the world. I'm sorry, but that was so cute. Okay, you don't push any buttons. You squeeze it, like this. Just then, Sylvia walked by and saw us. Well, well, well. Who makes you smile like that, Kai? Janet, you are really something, huh? As she left, I felt my heart racing and saw Kai blushing also. Whew, it sure feels hot like summertime. So, Kai, how long have you been living here? Just recently. I'm actually a skier from the city too, but I came here due to some stuff. Come on, 
Let's go sell the milk. Kai and I then made our way to the bustling market. Surprisingly, customers were eager to get their hands on our milk. I was ready to make my first hard-earned cash when suddenly... <clears throat> You'd better watch out. You'd better not buy. Better not drink this milk right here. Jinxie Janet's coming to town. The crowd buzzed with concern over our milk. Actually, I thought someone else was a jinx. You see, our milk is especially fresh today. All thanks to my good luck charm, Janet. She and I worked all morning to milk the cows by hand. Thanks to Kai's words, the crowd was excited again. Just like that, we sold out in just a few hours. Woohoo! But when we got home, people started praising Emma for bringing good luck to the business. Actually, it was Kai and me who milked the cows. And more thanks to Kai who did most of the heavy lifting. She has nothing to do with this. The room suddenly felt awkward and people started to look away. Only Sylvia cared to acknowledge us. I see. You two make a great team. What about us? I think we'll make a better team. Get off of me, you creep. Ouch. Feisty. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Why are you acting like such an animal, Janet? I'm alright. She may be a bit cold right now, but she'll warm up to me in no time. Right, princess? Emma immediately gave me a death stare. Aiden, why are you here? I'm here for you, brother dearest. Mom and Dad are worried sick back home. Holy cow, these two are related, but they're nothing alike. Welp, it does explain why their tension was scorching up the room. Stop it, you two. Always with the bickering. It's getting late. Janet, will you go and lock the barn door? Oh, oh yes, definitely. But before I reached the barn, a hand suddenly pulled me back. Keep your claws off of Aiden. He's mine. Oh, I see. You're smitten with him, huh? Well, too bad, because he seems to like me instead, sister. How dare you? Emma dashed ahead of me towards the barn, turned all the lights on, blew on the deafening whistle, and the sheep went wild again. I desperately tried to stop the panic herd, but no use. Only when the farmer showed up and let the shepherd dog do his job was the scene under control. This is all your fault. You'll bring us nothing but bad luck and chaos. That's not true. I was trying to help while this was Emma's doing. Stop with all the blaming and start learning some manners, will you? <laughs> I was stunned. Behind Richard, Emma grinned slightly. She won this time, but not for long. Because how about I steal Emma's crush, aka Aiden, right in front of her? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't really have to steal anything. Because Aiden always found his way to me first. And he also brought Kai along. It was like something was going on between them. And they kept fighting to get my attention. They showered me with food. Fought over the seat next to me at dinner. And wouldn't let me lift anything remotely heavy. It was getting a little annoying. But seeing Emma fuming with jealousy each time is so worth it. <laughs> One afternoon, Kai and I were picking flowers in the field. When he gently tucked a flower in my hair. It looks good on you. Then, he lifted my face and leaned in closer. I was floating in the summer breeze, ready for a kiss, when we both got shaken up by the engine revving. Aiden? So pretty thing. Wanna go out with a date with me? She's with me. Can't you see? Well, maybe I'm blinded. Blinded by my love for you. Um, how about you two can show some brotherly love and go together, huh? Then I walked off, only to see Emma's blonde head sticking out from the flowers. Hey, Aiden, on second thought, I'd love to go with you. Shall we? Driving away, I could see Emma furious. And Kai, with sad eyes following me? But the thing was, this was hella awkward. I don't feel like flirting if there was no Emma. And he, well, I don't know, couldn't stand it anymore. So I told him to stop at this random clothing store and insisted he try on this fancy suit. Whoa, you cleaned up nicely, huh? Do I not look good usually? Well, you kinda look like a hooligan. <laughs> Is that genuine joy I see on your face? What? I'm always smiling. Oh, really? You and Kai were ready to bite each other's heads off just then. You don't know everything about us, Janet. I know you have a thing for him, but I can never let you two be together. Not this time. We came back to the farm to see Emma waiting for us, all agitated. You tramp! Isn't Kai enough for you? Now you're playing the double game with Aiden? And you're just jealous because Aiden doesn't like you. That's right. I only have eyes for Janet. She and Kai were never together, so quit sticking your nose into our business. Emma couldn't utter a word. For the first time, she seemed so vulnerable, then rushed away in tears. Look what you did, brother. Playing with both Emma's and Janet's hearts is a low blow. You're one to talk. Wasn't the thing with Tina your low blow? Tina? Tina who? Tina was your crush. I had nothing to do with her. It's about time you get over that. 
that's not what Tina said. She told me you flirted with her, and you abandoned her when she's falling for you. She lied, okay? She wanted to use you against me, and never once reciprocated her obsessive behaviors. I just want to leave everything behind and enjoy my life here, with her. So Aiden, please, just let us be. Too bad. She seems to like me instead. <laughs> Can't you see? She doesn't care if her sister likes me. She still chose me over you. Dang, those words hit me hard. I didn't realize what I'd done to Emma all along. <sighs> it's time to end all these silly sibling conflicts. Guys, stop. Can't you see you're hurting each other just like Emma and I? Janet, this jerk plays with you and Emma. He deserved a fist or two. No, Kai. I'm not exactly innocent either. I was also using Aiden to get back at Emma. You what? I know, I know, but all these petty revenge doesn't bring us any good. No one wins at all. And honestly, I regretted having hurt Emma, and so should you guys. <laughs> you want this golden boy to drop his sky-high ego? Yeah, good luck with that. I'm not a golden boy, Aiden. <laughs> Are you kidding me? With all your success and skiing trophies, mom and dad can even see me behind all that. When you left home, they freaked out and made me go looking for you. Do you know the reason I quit skiing and left home? Cause mom and dad wouldn't stop pressuring me. It's suffocating. Every time I stand on the rink, my whole body shakes like crazy. I'm not perfect, Aiden. And I did not want to take away any attention from you. I'm sorry if you ever feel that way. Well, I didn't know. You could have told us what you'd gone through. To who? To mom and dad? The ones who keep pushing and nagging? Sorry I wasn't there for you. Heck, I was the worst. Right? You two could work this out. Now if you excuse me, I have my own sibling conflict to resolve. I was about to leave when we heard Emma screaming. Fire! Fire! Help! We immediately rushed to her, and the fire already caught on the haystack. It was spreading fast. I... I accidentally knocked over the oil lamp. What do we do now? You go call the firefighter. Aiden, you go get everyone here. Us two, we will go get water. Go, go, go! Kai and I tried our best to pour bucket after bucket of water, but it only stopped the fire from spreading, not put it out. We almost exhausted ourselves when the farmers arrived along with the firefighter. And luckily, after half an hour, everything was under control. Phew! But then, the farmers started surrounding me. It was because of you, isn't it? Every time incidents happen, you're always on the scene. Coincident? I think not. There we go again. But this time, I'm too beat up to even say anything. Then, there was Emma, petrified in fear, so I used every last effort to stand up. That's right, I knocked over the oil lamp and caused this fire. What are you doing? It's okay, I'm used to this. No, it was my fault. Janet's just trying to take the fall. In fact, this whole time, I was the one doing all the damage and blaming it on Janet. Was this for real? Emma's standing up for me? You? Is this some kind of childish joke? You could have really harmed everyone here. This is our life work, not your girls' playground. I- I'm truly sorry. That's it. Tomorrow morning, you'll have to leave here for good. Both of you. We had no choice but to call our parents to pick us up. Meanwhile, I gotta pack my stuff. Hey, I know I've been mean to you since forever, so why did you still take the blame for me? I'm just tired of petty fights. Besides, I feel bad for stealing Aiden away from you. I don't have any feelings for him, and I don't think he falls for me either. I just wanted to mess with you. I figured. Um, I actually heard what you guys were talking about before, and it hit me hard. You know, I used to enjoy being the only child. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but honestly, when you came, it felt like all the attention and love was stripped away from me. I felt so lonely and jealous, so I decided to make you the center of attention, but in the worst way possible. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all in the past now. I just want us to get along. And me not be called a jinx anymore. You got it. The next morning, our parents arrived all angry. We were so ready for a long-term grounding. But once they saw us holding hands, they were pleased. Honey, I think your plan worked. I knew it. You two can be little troublemakers, but deep down, you still love each other. Come on, let's go home. Can we just wait for a few minutes? I don't want to leave without saying goodbye to Kai. But what took him so long? I gotta get going. Then Kai finally showed up. Wait up. I rushed out of the car and ran to give him a big hug. I thought you wouldn't come to say goodbye. How could I not? Especially when you forget the most important thing. Really? What is it? It's me, you silly. Oh, you're coming back to the city? Yes, I have a reason to be back now. To the city, to skiing, and what is it? It's you. Suddenly, a tree fell over right beside us and crashed the mailbox, causing all of the mail to fly out. <laughs> you really are bad luck, aren't you? Hey, that tree was already rotten. And don't you think that it barely missing us means I'm good luck? I'm just kidding.
Hi there, I'm Anita, a science pro and robotics prodigy. I've won countless trophies, including one for making a talking replica of BB-8. But it's my crush's heart that I can't win. Tom has just refused to accompany me to the last middle school dance. But who cares? I've got my bestie Barb. It'll still be fun. We can go together. We arrived at the dance to find that everyone had dates, except for us. Well, this is a little awkward. Move. This is a dance floor, grannies. Either you dance or get out. I bet this is the first party you've ever got to attend. As if Tom would go out with such a loser. Yeah, you should try asking your robots out instead. As they walked off laughing, I felt so disheartened. Barb told me not to listen to them, but their words niggled away at me. I realized if I didn't change, then I'd waste the rest of my teen years by being a loser that got left out of all the fun. I needed to reinvent myself now before it was too late. Over the summer break, I thought it over and realized that there was only one way forward. I should flip the script, where nobody knew who I was. And this is the perfect occasion for that. High school! I purposely chose a school that's across the city. It's a bit inconvenient, but that's how to be sure I'd not run into anyone from my local middle school. Of course, except for Barb. She's going there with me also. Hey, recognize me? I'm still Anita. Like my new look? I've had a style update, ditched my glasses and all the uncool geeky stuff. Ooh, let's surprise my bestie. <laughs> Anita? Whoa, talk about a Captain Marvel transformation. Gee, thanks. This hair color is so in season right now. Hang on, you look just like Chelsea. Oh, do I? How funny. You sound like her too. Okay, so Chelsea was this popular girl from middle school. Um, yeah, I may have spent all summer studying her. Alright, I actually mirrored her style and mannerisms. I'm just learning to better myself. This isn't any different from using humans as models when programming a robot. Besides, it's not like Chelsea's here to mind. Speaking of robots, how's your BB-8? No, that's my past. We'll never be cool and get boyfriends if our peers think we're nerds. Come with me after school, I'll give you a makeover too. It's okay, Anita. I don't mind being a nerd. But if this makes you happy, then you have my full support. My sweet, naive Barb has no idea how incredible being cool would be. They are the cool kids here, aka celebrities. They're so dazzling and popular. And oh my god, who's that? He's so dreamy. So I confidently strutted over to introduce myself to the whole group when... Ah! Luckily, no one seemed to notice my fall, or they just didn't care. <sighs> Anyways, this was only my first day here. I had loads of time to fit in with the celebrities. And then catch that hottie, who supposedly named Eric's attention. At first, the popular girls didn't notice me, but then a few days in, Lou, the celebrity's leader, had a lipstick emergency and I sprung to her rescue. See? I told you, this burgundy shade really pops against your cool undertone. Ruby Woo? That's so 2015, Ashley. You can put that away. And easy peasy, I became part of the group. They invited me to their parties, shopping trips, and spa days. It's like entering a completely new world. An extra shiny one. I got to sit with them at lunch where they ubered low-calorie food. Normally, I had the same as them, but today my mom packed me a special sandwich with the moist maker, just like Ross's from Friends. Sorry, guys, but Anita doesn't share food! <laughs> Are you seriously going to drink that? You can practically see the fat and lactose swirling in it. Gross! Oh, okay. Looks like the moist maker would have to wait. I looked around and saw Barb sharing her mom's amazeballs mac and cheese with her new geeky friends. I've not spoken to Barb properly in weeks. We kept trying to reschedule as I had manicures with Lou, Haley's party, and all these ever after school shopping trips. Which kept getting so expensive. Aren't you gonna buy that? You haven't bought anything. Um, that's because I only wear tailor-made clothes made of Egyptian cotton or at least silk linen. Um, okay. In that case, you can be our assistant. Make sure you wear a cute cardigan tomorrow for a OOTD Instagram post. Ashley has made a list of the available colors. That's why I had to use all of my allowance on this cardigan. But it's fine. That's just how popular clicks have to be. And it's so nice of them to let me hang around. I proudly strutted alongside the celebs, looking just like one of them. Other students gawped at us, and it sure felt good. But suddenly, this dizzy spell came over me. I started shaking and feeling cold, then pitch black. I woke up in the infirmary to Barb's worried face. Oh good, you're awake. It's no surprise you passed out. You aren't eating enough. What? I'm eating just fine. Besides, skinny is chic. I'm not arguing with you. You're lucky your head didn't hit the floor thanks to Eric. Eric saved me? He must have caught me like in a romantic movie. This diet is amazing. 
I wouldn't have been in Eric's arms without it. Later, I tried to thank him, but he put his headphones on and walked off, and I never saw him at any of the celebs' parties or anything. A hot guy like him is probably hanging out with an even cooler clique and interested in even more popular girls. I need to try harder. But my geeky side wasn't going to stay suppressed. One time, this guy slated Spider-Man 2099, my favorite character ever. Dude doesn't understand how the multiverse works, and his suit sucks. Are you kidding me? As if you know how it works, his suit incorporates Parker tech and has stealth features and exploding spider saucers. Okay, cool it, new girl. It's just some weirdo jumps around in spandex. Right, be cool. Cool kids didn't geek out over superheroes. Luckily, everyone else seemed distracted. I turned to look and saw them already flocked around some new kid with a huge backpack, a comic t-shirt, and jeans. Huh, it's like looking at middle school me. When I managed to get a closer look, I almost fell over in shock. It was Chelsea! Why would pretty popular Chelsea do a total 180 on her looks? I tried to avoid Chelsea, but then one time when I was trying to approach Eric, she appeared and he actually spoke to her. Does Chelsea know Eric? Since when? How come? Ah! Time stopped as I stared into his big dreamy eyes, but falling for each other again? <laughs> he might as well just stay in his arms. I quickly walked away and passed Chelsea. Our eyes met. Did she recognize me? She didn't say anything, but was that a smirk I saw? I needed to find out if Chelsea really recognized me, so I turned to Barb. It was a bit awkward, as we hadn't spoken in a while. But luckily, Barb was cool about it and said she'd try to find out. We chatted a bit, and then she asked me, We are still going to Comic-Con on the 7th, right? Yeah, of course! Can't wait! I was excited about Comic-Con, until... A few days later, the celebrities had a big announcement. They were attending Conan Gray's concert on the 7th. Are you coming, or do you have some tragic nerdy convention to go to? Huh? That's oddly specific. I panicked and said yes to the concert. We had to give money to Asher the next day, and she would take care of purchasing everyone's tickets. But thanks to that overpriced cardigan, how am I supposed to afford this? Hmm, I guess there was one way to pay for it. Me and Barb's Comic-Con fund, which we'd been saving since middle school. I was only borrowing and would definitely pay it back. The following day, the celebs gathered to discuss the concert. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flustered-looking Barb. What about her plan? Did you just spend all your savings on some concert you don't even care about? I'm sorry, I promise I'll pay you back. I just needed some time. So, you spent my share too? How could you? I felt terrible. I never meant to upset my friend like that. I just really wanted to fit in. Only, after that day, I found myself miserable with the celebs. The more time I spent with them, the more things about them got me second-guessing this group's dynamic. For instance, they talked a lot about the importance of being eco-friendly, but ordered Uber Eats almost every day, and constantly brought new, cute, reusable straws in Stanley Cups. Moreover, it was always lose weight or the highway, and they even trash-talked their own group members behind their backs. I found myself often looking around for Barb and then feeling extra guilty. On my way home, I was dragging my feet, feeling awful, when I passed an appliance store. I saw some students from my school's robotics team struggling with their droid, so I gladly offered a hand. If you want my lunch money, take it, but please leave Gears Brosnan alone! We worked hard on it! I tried explaining that I just wanted to help, but they kept pushing me away. I stared down at myself and realized that I wasn't welcomed because I'd given up everything to look like a celebrity. However, I didn't feel like one. I'd stood by and let the celebs push everyone else around. Was this really the life I wanted? That weekend was supposed to be spa day with the celebs, so I went out to the mall to ask Lou for my concert ticket. I was going to sell it and pay Barb back. Only when I got there, I saw Chelsea with them. But she looked like her cool self again. Uh-oh, I better go. But too late. Chelsea caught me and told everyone. Guys, look who's here. Fun fact, Anita and I used to be friends back in middle school. Cover yourself in foundation all you want, but your nerdiness will still show. Everyone started laughing, and that's when it dawned on me. They were all in on Chelsea's plans to expose me. I wanted to leave, but I still needed my ticket back. Sure, you can have it back, but on one condition. Wash off your Chelsea disguise and go back to being pathetic little you again. And so they told me to wash my hair in this decorative basin in a lush store, before everyone's confused eyes and their live streaming cameras. I swallowed my pride and did it, for Barb. But afterward, Lou turned back on her word. Actually, I gave it to Chelsea. Tough luck. Oops, too bad I never agreed to the deal Lou made with you. I felt overcome with panic and shame. I ran and I bumped into someone. Eric! Seeing how upset I was, he took me for coffee and a chat. 
As soon as we sat down, I burst into tears and told him how I'd lost everything. My popularity, dignity, friends. It all started to fall apart when Chelsea turned up all of a sudden, and then the domino effect took over. Chelsea? I'd always known she's catty, but I never thought she'd go that far. How can you be friends with her? <laughs> what? No, it's not what you think. You still don't recognize me? What do you mean, recognize? Then he revealed that he was from my middle school. I was shooketh! But if I squinted real hard, I guess he did look vaguely familiar. Whoa, puberty hit you like a truck. Same for you. Yeah, no, it wasn't puberty for me. I got emotionally scarred from being an outcast and became afraid of missing out on cool stuff, so I turned myself into a Chelsea clone to be popular. That's insane. But if it means anything, I prefer the old you. It's great seeing you at the school. But when I saw that you changed and joined the celebs, I was kind of apprehensive. But for real, though, I would have died for you to notice me. I was beyond surprised. He liked me all along? Suddenly, Chelsea jumped in. Why has it always been her? I changed myself to look like her. Didn't you say you liked nerdy girls? So why not me? Say what? Chelsea liked Eric? So she really copied my look. And for that reason? I'm sorry, Chelsea, but it's my feelings. I can't believe you rejected me twice for this little nerd, and she doesn't even look like herself anymore. Chelsea, it's never been about looks. It's about who she is. In the midst of it, I finally understood something. I was fine just being me. I never needed to be anything else. I've switched schools and turned myself into a dork for you. Ah! You're lucky this time. I watched Chelsea stomp out. I realized how I was constantly anxious and on edge that I'd messed up while hanging out with the celebrities. I missed the truly happy moments with real friends where I could just be me. All this time, I thought I'd been missing out on all the fun, but turns out, I missed nothing. The true way to have beautiful teenage years is to spend it with people that really appreciate you and do the things that you actually enjoy. I thanked Eric, then left. There was something important I needed to do first. I went home and fixed my BB-8, then took it over to Barb's house. Sorry, Barb. I'm so sorry, Barb. I was so desperate to be cool that I overlooked what really mattered. I miss you and our friendship so much. I missed you too, and I saw that humiliating video and just wanted to know you were okay. On second thoughts, I'll forgive you if you give me your BB-8. <laughs> no can do, as I'm selling it online to make money to pay you back. I only brought it here to make my apology more meaningful. Did it work? We both hug. The next few days at school, I tried my best to fix things. I returned to my old image, well, with a slight upgrade. I can't let my beauty skills go to waste now. And I dug out all my geeky stuff. I showed up at the robotics club, and this time, I confidently strode over and immediately fixed their robot. I told you I could help. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's a celebrity's job. Look at you, all happy and smiley with your own loser nerd kind. Yeah, I'm happy. While well, you once tried and failed to be one of us, remember? Being a nerd isn't just about appearance, it's about what's inside. By the way, how was the concert? I heard your fanatic behavior got you kicked out. Sounds exciting. Chelsea and the celebs looked fuming as they sashayed off, but I didn't care, as I was finally back where I belonged. The rich socialites chilling in their family luxury resort was a sight to behold. Grayson Andrews, the heir of the giant Andrews Corporation, who was just back from his Europe tour. And his sister, Veronica, was the notorious I want it, I get it girl. Ahem, this orange is oversweet. But, miss, this is fresh orange with no added sugar. Whatever, add some salt or anything. Immediately. And bring me a sandwich with the beluga caviar here, too. Yes, miss. <laughs> You've become some grumpy old lady recently, Ronnie. Right at that moment, their dad hurriedly walked in, looking urgent. Kids, I have something serious to tell you. Do you remember our resort in Vietnam that got backlash last month? Is this the case where people were blaming us for harming the environment? It's just some employee's reckless act, and we already cleared it out, right, Dad? That's right. But I've just got the report that the inspectors got involved, and the resort's suffering a great loss. I couldn't see it keep sliding like that. So, I've been thinking of sending you to Vietnam to take care of this. Dad, you can count on me! Vietnam, isn't it? That's where an idea came to Veronica. Dad, let me go with Grayson. I could be helpful. Her dad was considering it for a while and then agreed. Oh, Vietnam. It's been a hot minute. Of course, I have my own reason to be here again. And this is my reason. It all started back four years ago when Veronica's family gathered at Nam Family's resort on Lunar New Year, Ted Holiday. Wow, my friend. See what you're building. You're right. I bet everyone would love this. 
Honey, this resort is surely profitable with this design and location. If only we could own one like this. Meanwhile, 14-year-old Veronica was totally mesmerized by someone else. Right at the moment her eyes caught the sight of Nam, Veronica was sure she met the one. Oh my, is this what people call love at first sight? Look at you! The little kid now grew up into a pretty girl, huh? Here's your lucky money! Instead of lucky money, could you please give me your lucky son? Everyone burst into laughter at her cheekiness, including Nam. I heard Nam is an excellent student at school. We can't waste talent, right? So, I think I'll offer him a scholarship in America. What do you say? A scholarship in the USA? Surely it's a good opportunity for me! He turned to see his parents' reaction, and they all nodded encouragingly. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. I'd do my best to pay back your kindness. But he definitely wasn't the one who enjoyed this the most, as our Veronica's heart was singing with joy, too. So that summer, Nam flew to America with all of the eagerness and excitement about the land of dream. He'd be staying with Mr. Andrews' family for the time being, and enrolled in the same school as Veronica and Grayson. And within the first week at the new school, he already established himself as a genius. It didn't take long for him to top in every single subject, and teachers were satisfied as he was also active in school's activities. Son, I'm so proud of you. Cozy as it seemed, the laughter in a warm family dinner didn't shine on the host's son, Grayson. I'd never heard the proud word from dad before. Being the heir is not easy, but I tried my best. Why was he always the one outstanding? After the dinner, when others left, Mrs. Andrews approached Nam. Don't think my husband gave you some compliments that you believe you're above anyone. Remember, you're just a parasite on my husband's kindness. So Mrs. Andrews didn't like me here. I'd better be careful. From a corner, Veronica was hearing what her mom said to Nam. Mom's always been hard like that. It's all right, Nam. Be strong. You have me here. And she made sure she'd be anywhere Nam was, and no girls could come near him. Nam, be my boyfriend, will you? Ronnie, don't make a scene here. Aw, did he just call me Ronnie? Everyone, attention! Nom is mine. Don't you dare bother my man. To seal up even more, she stuck a bunch of stickers on his clothes and bag. Huh, <laughs> nice tattoo, bro. It's nonsense. You like it? Then here. Then when Grayson had ran far, he looked down on his hand holding a sticker. Stupid girl. She couldn't design a better one? You think it's the end of how to get Nom's heart plan? Then you underestimate this girl. Ah, Nom, I got sunstroke. I'm too weak to walk myself. Take me home. Jeez, seemed like she'd never run out of tactics, huh? Wow, tending to your bay this much. <laughs> Nom simp lord. The buzzing from the others did bother him, but he didn't want to make a mess as he's indebted to Veronica's family's kindness. And deep down, he found her annoyance kind of cute. Aw, oh, so sweet, man. Maybe he likes me too. And then Grayson ran towards them and cheerfully gave them the good news. Hey, Dad just won a big contract, and we will dine in Gordon Ramsay's restaurant tonight, guys. Yay! Are you sure you're tired? Um, ouch! Oh, my head hurts so bad. Nom, I think I'm gonna faint. Carry me, too. You wish? I'm gonna be up here forever. Then three of them walked side by side, happily chatting, and the schoolyard seemed to be lit up by their cheerful laughter. Everything went smooth like that. Then one day, Veronica woke up to see Nam was packing all his stuff. What are you doing? I'm going back to Vietnam. Why? Has anything happened? Please don't go. Get off me. Then he coldly walked straight out of her house with no more words. Veronica crouched in sadness. Worse still, no matter how hard she tried to contact him, still no replies from Nam. The only news she could update was his family's resort was plunged into crisis. And with a good will, Veronica's dad offered to buy the resort with an enormous sum to help them restart their business anew. And for the past four years, her heart still wanted no one but Nam, and she'd been waiting desperately for this reunion. Yo, long time, right bro? Hello, stranger. It actually feels good to see them, too. If only that hadn't happened, the three of us might still be a perfect trio now. Nam couldn't forget the day when the hurtful truth was revealed. It's... it's you who schemed against our resort? But why? Huh, you should ask why your father had that impeccable resort that makes me want it to be mine. <laughs> Thanks anyway. You... I'm gonna tell Mr. Andrews. Suit yourself. But remember... Two families are working together on a project. Let's see, if we withdraw, who knows? Your family will go bankrupt. Do you really want that, huh? Nam felt rage boiling up his body, but so did the powerless feeling. Right at that moment, he saw Veronica went home and immediately clanged to her mom. 
Mom, there's a new spa downtown. Does it speak mother-daughter time to you? Of course, hon. Anything you want. They're all the same. Spoiled rich socialites who think they're above everyone. And right in that minute, he realized that he couldn't be here any longer. Xin Chao, Nam, how you doing? Do you miss me? But Nam just coldly turned to the other direction. <laughs> seems like someone just got ignored. And seems like someone wants a death note. That's fine, he's just being shy. I'd be staying in Vietnam for a while and definitely make him my boyfriend. Nam, you can't run away from me this time. <laughs> but Nam was such a workaholic, and with Veronica's presence, he's stuck in the office even later. At this rate, how am I supposed to seduce him? There is the only way. After that incident, Nam's family managed to build a small hotel, but attracted a great influx of tourists. That afternoon, Veronica came there, then barged into the office room. Oh, hi! Uh, I mean, hello! Hi! Dad told me to go here and learn some business, but Grayson doesn't give me anything. Please let me help you here. What do you want now? Nam just wanted some peace away from Veronica, but things didn't go that way easily. Come on, son! Do you remember when our family had a hard time? Veronica's family was willing to help us? <laughs> Help our butt, Dad. If only you knew. Okay, but don't make a mess here. The day after, Veronica had the first working day at Nam's family's hotel. Mangosteen? We don't have this in America. Hey, you! Bring me more! Hey, guys, can you bring the sunshade here? I'm not wanting to be a burnt squid! Didn't you tell me you wanted to learn? Get off your butt! Then Nam gave her loads of errands that she hardly had time to breathe. Jeez, I don't need to lift a finger at home. And now I'm folding blankets? The world is getting crazy! Then she shook off the bedsheet, but somehow the towel covered her head like the one in a ghost story film. Ooh, let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm sexy and I know it. Little did she know, there was someone who couldn't hide his smile watching her fooling herself. She hasn't changed much. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, what you doing? Do it properly. Later, Veronica was dragging her aching body back to her family's resort after her first working day. Oh, I can't feel my hand anymore, and my feet hurt running around. Stop whining, Ronnie. It's nothing to what I've done today. Planning the strategies, promoting the services, blah, blah, blah. Grayson turned around to see his sister already sleeping like a log. He gently put the blanket on her when he received a phone call from Mom. Hi, Mom. I'm doing just fine. No need to worry. Hey, I heard Nam's family's hotel is doing good, right? But right at the time our resort suffered? Coincidence can't explain this properly. Grayson, I'm sure he planned to get this revenge for the past thing. I don't think he's that much. <laughs> anyway, Mom, you still hate him after those years? I hate your dad always comparing you with him. This low class will never be on the same level with my son, right? What Mom said didn't stay still in Grayson. It's true that Dad always regard him more than me. Even when he's gone back to Vietnam, Dad still talked about Nam being this, Nam being that. Next morning, Veronica got up and freaked out that she'd overslept for more than two hours. When coming to the hotel, she received a glaring look from Nam and a long list of errands that seemed not to end. Gosh, I have to do this for how long? Finish it, and we're going out for lunch. Hearing that, Veronica diligently cleaned every corner of the hotel, making sure no single speck of dust left. Yay! Let's go for lunch! Huh? But why you're here as well? Happy being the third wheel? Then they went to a local store selling chicken rice, which was definitely out of Veronica's expectation. What the heck? Eating on the street? Nom, I don't like this place. I'm sweating like a dog already. Go to some restaurant and treat me with beefsteak. If you don't like it, then don't eat. No worries, I'm gonna take care of her plate. Come on! Okay, but you have to feed me. Uh. Feeling others' eyes on him, Nam had no other choice but to act along. At the first spoon, Ronnie didn't expect the taste explosion of the soft and tender chicken, as well as the gravy and rice. She immediately dug in the plate and finished in seconds. Slow down! No one takes your food. Then he gently wiped out the rice on her cheek, making her heart skip a beat. Later, Veronica and Nam took a stroll around Han River. You ask about Grayson? Veronica successfully cut the tail and made him stay still in a coffee shop. Oh, Vietnam summer is definitely like a giant oven. Aha, uh -huh. how about the classic move? Then Veronica wobbled like a jellyfish, aiming to fall into Nam's arms. But he suddenly walked away, leaving her landing face right on the ground. She scrambled up to see he was already chewing the fat with some random girl over there. Veronica immediately stormed in like a crazy bull towards the girl. Hey, who are you? I'm Nam's girlfriend. You better stay away from him or else. 
<laughs> Sorry. See you next time. Then Nam hastily dragged her away. What are you doing? She's not the one you could mess around. She's my biggest partner. Is that so? I... I'm sorry. You, go back to work. Right now. Then Nam caught up with Grayson at a coffee shop by the river. My sister is a little annoying, right? As her brother, I do apologize to you. She's fine for the most part, but sometimes... Yeah, you know. I don't know what to do with her. There's always an answer for everything, bro. The next day, Veronica came to Nam and saw him about to go somewhere. And as usual, she insisted going along with him. Enough! Stop goofing around! But... I like you. You know that. Right at that moment, a girl walked over to them. Babe. Immediately, Nam turned around and pulled her in his arms. Here you are. Then he kissed her on the lips, and Ronnie was frozen in her spot. Voila, finally done. The most exhausting part of moving mansion was having to rearrange my Birkin collection. But at least my walk-in closet is bigger than my last one, so... Now, I need to pick out the perfect outfit for school tomorrow. First impressions are crucial. This is my favorite fit at the moment, but let's get a second opinion. Mom, Dad, what do you think? Wellstone High's new Queen Bee's incoming! Adele, there you are. I bought you a few new items. Ooh, goody! I love surprises. What is this? Mom, are these for the maids? Honey Pie, it appears that well-off residents in this neighborhood have been targeted by a dangerous robber's gang. For your safety, you'd better tone down your outfits. At least until they catch the thieves. I know it's not ideal, but safety first. Come on, Pumpkin, isn't this shirt adorable? No, it's not. I'm not being seen dead in that rag. My parents were probably just exaggerating. Let's see. Hmm, it seems some girl had her Hermes bag stolen, another her Cartier bracelet, and some guy his Rolex. No, oh, no, I couldn't let some crooks take my precious babies. The next morning, I trudged downstairs in those awfully bland clothes. Ugh, they were itchy and smelt so bad. Darling, this will only be for a little while. You're our only angel, and we simply couldn't bear it if anything were to happen to you. <sighs> Fine, where's my chauffeur? I want to take the Porsche today. At least that can still save my grand entrance. Absolutely not. If you do that, you may as well be wearing a beacon to attract those thieves. I think it's best if you take the bus. The bus? Before I could protest anymore, Mom kissed me on the forehead, burst into tears, and ran off hysterically. Have a wonderful day, sweetie. Great. So much worrying for me. Now I had no choice but to find the bus stop, wherever that was. I wandered around the corner when suddenly, a deafening scream came from behind me. Thief, watch out! I spun around to see a guy running towards me, so I immediately sped off. But soon I felt the thief reach me. Terrified, I crouched down, raised my bag. Here, take it! Don't hurt me! But no reply. I peered up and saw the guy was ahead of me and was restraining a bad guy. Turns out, he wasn't the thief, and the actual thief wasn't after me. Oops, how embarrassing. Let's just leave ASAP, but I ended up crashing into some flashy car. Are you okay? It's the guy who just caught the thief. I froze. He's so handsome. I was about to reply when the car door swung open, and this angry rich guy stormed over to me. Are you blind? You scratched my car. Pay up. Leave her alone, Bernie. Hmm, he's handsome. And kind. Totally different from that arrogant Bernie guy. Turns out he's called Roy. We all go to the same school. Better still, Roy offered to drive me there in his fancy car. What a shame that I bumped into a hottie looking like a mess. If only he knew the real me, he'd fall for me hard. We're made for each other. We even have matching cars. We arrived at school to a bunch of fangirls waiting to greet Roy. Makes sense. He's handsome and oh so rich. What's not to like? Roy told them I was new here but they didn't seem so pleased to see me. Roy, it's so sweet you're helping out the less fortunate. Ugh, these peasants! If only they knew the real me! To prove to Roy that I was so much better than those other girls the next day, I snuck my designer clothes to school to get changed. When I spotted Roy, I hurried over to dazzle him, but that annoying fangirl Maya interrupted us again. Nice try, new girl, but your knockoff clothes won't impress anyone. You shouldn't judge someone by their clothes. That's very kind of you, Roy. But we both know that only a Chanel girly like me would be a good match for you. Everyone started to make a fuss, but Roy just shooed them away to leave. Ugh, thanks to those wannabes, I'd missed my chance with him. After class, I changed back into my boring plain clothes ready for the bus home. What is this tacky fabric? Suddenly, Roy passed by. Cute shirt. I think it suits you much better. There's nothing wrong with dressing down. It brings out one's natural beauty better. Wow, it seems that rich boy Roy wasn't a show-off. What a blessing in disguise this pretending to be poor was. Roy clearly liked me more this way, so I should keep it up.
Once, I pushed a bike to the end of the street and waited for Roy to pass by so I could make out it was broken and ask for a lift. It's definitely not because I don't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> Over the next few days, I clung to Roy. I told him how I didn't know anyone at school yet or where anything was as an excuse to get him to take me to the canteen. But look at the food. Really? Are we supposed to eat this? Oh, we've never gotten to eat stuff like this at home. Uh, looks yummy. Luckily, Roy felt sorry for me even more and just caringly explained the menu. The next day, I brought in my own lunchbox with Roy's favorite, mac and cheese, which obviously was made by my chef, but he doesn't need to know that. He clearly enjoyed it, but then commented, Adele, you shouldn't waste your money and effort on me like that. Please just spend it on yourself instead. Ugh, even though he was wealthy, he was so thoughtful of others. Hmm, how come I'd never thought of things this way? On the weekend, I went to a fair my parents were sponsoring in a nearby town. I wandered off by myself and suddenly spotted a familiar face selling caramel apples with some kids. Oh no, Roy, what was he doing here? He couldn't see me all dressed up like this. Before I could dart away, his eyes locked directly on mine. Roy, hello, why are you looking at me so strangely? Ah, uh, uh, this dress, it's handmade. And um, my mom found these shoes somewhere. Enough about me, <laughs> why are you here? Oh, I'm volunteering at an orphanage. The kids, they're the ones that grew these apples. Oh my god, could this guy be any cuter? Even though he's loaded, he's so down to earth and humble and he wants to make a difference. I really have to learn a lot from him. Later, I took the bus back to town with Roy. We continued chatting even after stepping off the bus, but then this convertible pulled up alongside us. Ugh, it was Bernie and Maya. Oh no, don't let her drag you down like that, baby. Where's your Rolls Royce? What's this? Isn't this Chanel's archive? Adele, are you? Yeah, right? This is a fake one. Now, please, leave. I grabbed Roy's arm and pulled him the opposite way. Adele, are you okay discrediting your image in front of Bernie like that? I mean, he's popular and rich. Everyone wants to impress him. I'm not that kind of social climber. He's such a conceited, bossy jerk. Unlike you. Roy seemed touched by my words, as he invited me to go to the grape farm with him next weekend. Okay, so I thought Roy had invited me here for some relaxation and fresh air. I didn't expect to be made to carry out tasks. This was probably his way of challenging me, and no chance I was going to fail it. The workers here are immigrants from different countries, but thanks to my extensive traveling, I, ahem, <clears throat> know quite a bit of foreign languages, enough to ask them to show me what to do. And it just so happens that my parents are obsessed with vintage wines, so I know my Chardonnay from my Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, these grapes will make a fine Malbec. N'est ce pas, Pierre? Oh, uh, I taught myself different languages and watched various documentaries to improve my skill set. It's nothing. Later, Roy needed to re-roof the barn, so we climbed up a ladder while I stayed below and passed him tools. But the ladder began to wobble, and he screamed at me to jump back. But instead, I stayed there and held up my arms to catch him. Are you okay? That was dangerous. Why didn't you step away? I couldn't watch you get hurt. Also, to have you falling for me would be everything I ever wanted. We rested in the corner, and that's when Roy told me that he liked me. I think you're one of a kind, but I don't want there to be secrets between us. I like you too, and that's true. We should have zero secrets, so I want to come clean. My family's actually rich, super rich. I'm sorry for not letting you know sooner. What about you, Roy? Do you have any secrets? Um, actually, my parents own this farm. Only the workers don't know about this, so please don't tell them. Aw, humble Roy. He's really the sweetest. He was also very understanding about the reason why I had to hide my true background. Finally, the gang leader of the robberies was caught. Things seemed to be back to normal, and this meant I could publicly go back to being me again. Everyone looked at me with different eyes. Only, Roy didn't seem all that impressed. When I invited him to my favorite restaurant, he told me he didn't like those stuffy places. Plus, he had too much work at the farm. I really wanted to go on a proper date with Roy, but I suppose just being with him was enough. So I agreed to help him out at the farm. As we waited for my chauffeur to pick us up, someone leaped out of a bush and snatched my gold necklace. As I gripped my bare neck in shock, Roy darted after them and grabbed it back. I noticed the robber say something to Roy before he fled. I later asked Roy about it, but he just shrugged it off. The next day at school, a woman in tatty clothes ran in, saying she urgently needed to find her son. When she saw Roy, she rushed towards him. Oh, here you are. I thought something happened to you. Someone told me you were in trouble. Everyone began chattering. Roy, you're wealthy. Why don't you buy your mom some nice clothes? He looked dumbfounded, then muttered, I'm not rich. 
I lied. What? Why? You always said money didn't matter, but you live in this facade? Roy avoided my eyes, mumbled out a sorry, then led his mom outside. So, this whole time, I didn't know who he truly was? Feeling hurt and deceived, I screamed out that it was over between us. My heart was cracked into two. This was horrible. Then I arrived home to see my parents frantic. Someone had sent them a threatening letter saying, I will come when you least expect it and take what I want. My parents were terrified that something bad would happen to me, so they hired bodyguards to protect me. The next day, a whole squad showed up, and to my utter shock, amongst them was... Roy, what are you doing here? What's your scheme? I replied to the advert. I didn't know it was for you. Please, Adele, I need this job. I could really do with the money. I hated that he'd lied to me, but I couldn't be that heartless. So, I agreed that he could be my bodyguard, as long as he knew his limit. Having Roy follow me everywhere really sucked. So when Bernie appeared and asked me out, even though I didn't particularly like the jerk, I agreed to it. It felt good to dress up and be taken to fancy restaurants, and it felt even better to see how raging Roy looked. On my way to the restroom, Roy stopped me. Bernie's not who you think he is. Please stay away from him. I put his words down to jealousy and shrugged him off me. If anything, what he said made me even more determined to get closer to Bernie. So when he suggested I throw a party at my mansion for my 16th birthday and invite all my friends, I immediately agreed. The party was great. It's been a while since I was able to have fun and forget about the recent shenanigan for a moment. Thanks to Bernie. Wait a minute, Bay. I've prepared a big surprise for you. The lights went out, and I waited, wondering what it could be. But it's been a little too long. I called out for Bernie, but nothing. I didn't hear from Roy, either. Realizing something was wrong, I found my way inside the house and was suddenly grabbed by someone. Shh, let me show you something. He led me to the garage and I caught Bernie trying to start the supercar. Next to him was a bag full of priceless jewelry. That was fast, but I didn't come here alone. Yeah, but your teammates are already taken care of. Then Roy opened the garage door and the cops rushed in to arrest Bernie. Outside, I saw a couple of other robbers being led away in handcuffs. You again? You can act all high and mighty all you want, but you're no different from me. It turns out, even after the leader was caught, the robbers gang was still alive and well, and Bernie was a member. He only pretended to be rich to fool his victims and provide intel to the gang. Knowing my true background, he's the one who stole my necklace. But the mission failed because Roy stopped him. As revenge, Bernie leaked information about Roy's family. I should have exposed your rich kid facade sooner. I let you off several times out of respect for our close friendship, but you still wouldn't leave me alone. Close friend? Who falsely accused me of theft then? As he was being led away, I suddenly remembered something. What about the letter? Why did you do such a stupid, unnecessary thing? Bernie looked confused and insisted he didn't have time to write insignificant things like letters. It was me. I wrote it. I knew Bernie wouldn't stop trying to steal from you, and I didn't want you to get hurt. So I sent the warning letter for your family to take cover. Roy walked off, but I went after him. What about some accusation between you and Bernie? Is it the reason why you have to live a fake life? Roy explained he and Bernie used to be close friends. Roy was always poor when Bernie's family was a little better off. Roy discovered that Bernie was involved in some petty thefts, so Roy tried to make him stop, but he only took revenge by accusing Roy. Although there was no specific evidence, due to his poor family background, people always assumed that he'd done it. So when Roy transferred schools, he decided to pretend to be rich, so no one falsely accused him again. Oh, my poor Roy. Ugh, why is finding my balance so tricky? Ouch! Roy helped me up and checked I wasn't hurt. You don't have to do this. Just live your life as comfortably as before. Nope, I want to do this. This way I can cycle to see you whenever I want. A flashy car or fancy outfit doesn't change my value as a person, but working with you felt good. And you know what? Even though you're not as well-dressed as when we first met, I still like you a lot.